Well, if there's not already humans on the moon doing things or living, and if there's not already them on the moon doing things and living, the newt wants the U.S. to have a base on the moon by 2020, the end of his second term. If you elect him to be the man, that's what he's, one of the things he's talking about. And let's see. <clears throat> By the end of 2020, we will have the first continuous propulsion system in space capable of allowing people to travel to Mars. I'm sick of being told we have to be timid and limited in technology that is 50 years old. Hmm. When we have 13,000 Americans living on the moon, I don't know why I picked 13,000. They can petition to become a state. And here's the difference between romantics and the so-called practical people. I want every young American to say to themselves, I could be one of those 13,000. I could be a pioneer. I need to study science and math and engineering. I need to learn how to be a technician. Part of building a bigger, better future. Thirteen, the old lucky number, eh? He had a deep passion for space travel since he was a boy and read missiles and rockets. Fascinated by Sputnik. Hmm. Well, eight years, but not a lot of time to get up there and begin to colonize, set things up. I don't know if you could have it ready for 13,000 in eight years. Not with the way we build things. They'd have to know more things than what we know they know, which they do. So, I thought I'd just bring you what he said. And let's see. They have the speed and dynamic pressure working again over here. So you can monitor the wind speed. As it has lessened, it was up well, between six and seven hundred that I knew. And it's went down. It's probably about between 450 and 500 it looks like. Nope, we got it updated. Well, you can see over here no geomagnetic storms. Over. Level 1 just went down. going up and down a little bit on speed. So probably will be safe to say 450 to 500 somewhere in there. The magnetic field's not bobbing up and down like it was. It's more stable. Dynamic pressure has a little bit of fluctuation to it. go over here on this page back to space weather and we'll show you what they have just come up with
and this would be about well it's 2.44 now a.m. on a Thursday morning and what, there's some uh, nice northern lights he's looking at this guy here he made a homemade photo he took a panoramic photo and wrapped it 360 So what you got is seven up well says so four eighty one, so that was pretty close. Subsiding it is over. Your aura watch is even cancelled. And when the sun went down you could have seen the moon and Venus if you looked west. I did. It looked cool. This is the 25th what they had now what what they have now and I just brought that up to show the sub subsiding storm they already had put that out now this is not going to be nothing that will be like what we just absorbed but there is some more activity but it's lower and we won't get hit by it apparently but it's acting up again AR-1402 and I had a sequence of C class magnetic eruption I hurled a bright mass, coronal mass over to the Sun North Pole and they have on SOHO can go watch and see what you think but it's not gonna the cloud is not heading towards the earth not directly at least and this and future eruptions from 1402 are unlikely to be geo effective as the sunspot is turning away from the planet by the end of the week it's going to be on the far side of the sun blasting away on the planets on the opposite side of the solar system so what is going on with this one now we shouldn't have any problem with this one it doesn't appear to be unless things change well, there's 1402 you can see that over here And then there's your interplanetary mag field, your K index, quiet. You got a four, 24 hour max with unsettled. Forecast. M and X. Latitudes. Well, we ought to be all right on that now. We did well, like I said, on this one. It looks like overall. Oh, I've already seen you, Newt. Now this one. talked about this a few months ago about fetuses and the harvesting of cells from them to be used as flavor enhancers in food and drink this guy here is catching a lot of ridicule from what I understand <clears throat> but it's just the way things go sometimes it doesn't mean he's a lunatic Let's see what they're going to say. This is the article I believe that I pulled out of my paper that I found online. That he is from Oklahoma. A Republican state senator from Oklahoma introduced a bill Tuesday 
that would ban the use of aborted human fetuses in food despite conceding that he's unaware of any company using such a practice. Okay. Ralph Shorty said his own internet research led him to believe such a ban is necessary and prompted him to offer the bill aimed at raising public awareness and giving an ultimatum to companies that might consider such a policy. He said he discovered suggestions online that some companies use embryonic stem cells to develop artificial flavors, but added he's unaware of any Oklahoma companies doing such research. In an email to the AP, the FDA spokesman said they're not aware of this particular concern. The director, executive director of the anti-abortion group Oklahoma for Life has successfully pushed some of the strictest anti-abortion laws in the country through the state GOP controlled legislature and said he had never heard of human fetuses being used in food research. I don't know anything about that, what he said. His bill would prohibit the manufacture or sale of any food in which aborted fetuses were used to develop any of the ingredients. Meanwhile, the bill caused a stir among the Oklahoma lawmakers, many decrying that the uh, chairman of the Human Services Committee said other issues deserve more of their attention. Too many challenges facing Oklahoma today. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, and he also said he'd never heard of human fetuses being used. Uh, remember that. I hate to think we're spending our time uh, coming up with possibility of things we need to stop. Okay. Well, you can pretty well see negativity towards what he's done but if you haven't looked into it and you're just sitting there thinking about it and you haven't looked into it yourself then you can't say it ain't going on so e even if they weren't doing it why would anybody be against legislation that would pr forbid them to do it if they ever even had the inkling of the idea that they wanted to do it and tried to research to see if they could and found that they could and decided they wanted to? Why it, would it bother you if they went ahead and passed the bill that said no you can't do it even if they claimed they weren't doing it? Wouldn't bother me a bit. So whether they are or aren't, it's not the, you know, it is and it isn't an issue. Because if they are doing it, well, if they are doing it, you get right down to it, you're eating people. Right? If you take a piece of the building blocks of life from another, and you put them into uh, something to consume, You're eating a piece of somebody else. They were aborted. Well, I guess it's trying to refresh. They were aborted before they were allowed to be born. Okay, so if they did, and they used them as flavor enhancers, well, how do you taste? This is how your taste buds work. Mm -hmm. You know, technically, how they work. <clears throat> They're located on your tongue, as everyone knows. Palate and throat provide sense of taste. And the nerves in your tongue send signals to your brain to interpret it. It's a signal to the brain. The brain interprets. Uh, the buds contain papillae. Within them are chemoreceptor cells designed to detect the taste. 
food and drink combined with spit saliva in your mouth and send information to the taste buds via the pores. And the triggers, this triggers nerve activity in the bud, which then sends a message to the brain. Now you have receptor cells are for taste are modified epithelial cells and they're organized as taste buds and located in several areas. You got four basic flavors that you will recognize and then you should know sweet, sour, salty, bitter. Now, the nerves of the tongue, three different types, or excuse me, three different nerves that transmit the information about the taste. And the information is sent to the medulla oblongata in the brain stem and then relayed those messages to the thalamus and then processing center in the parietal lobe of the brain to be identified. And without the brain identifying it, your taste would be all screwed up. I and mean, if your brain messed up, it wouldn't get what the signal right was. You'd get the taste wrong. It would make it taste different if it was screwed up. Huh. It's not whether they are or aren't, as far as the legislation goes. Wouldn't you rather prevent them from ever doing it with a piece of legislation that would forbid it? Look at the chemicals they put in your food already. They cause cancer. Why would you think that they would stop and not even do anything like that with your food? If we already know the chemicals that they put in the foods cause cancer. It's preservatives. It's already been discussed. <clears throat> And then here's your some of your lights for your solar storm. From Thursday, twenty sixth current. I brought this up. I read the same article in my paper. And it has an interesting thing from Doug Biesecker, the physicist at the U.S. Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, and, well, he said the sun is likely to get even more active in the next few months and years. Now, this is a physicist saying this. To me, this was a wake-up call. The sun is reminding us the solar max is approaching. And a lot worse is in store for us. Well, a lot worse storms and whatever the effects of those will be. We hope that you guys are paying attention. I assume that means us. I would say we just passed with flying colors. And I won't disagree with him on that. I thought we did really relatively well overall, like I said. And we have a little different of an article. Now I watched some videos of these and they were simply uh, wow, it blew my mind. 
in the way that they danced around. There's a different guy here in this one. And the reports warn that these flares could disrupt GPS signals, but the storm didn't it didn't register high enough. Only a two on a five. So it wasn't as big as you know, like what they thought it might have done. But the LA geophysicist Yuri Spritz he is saying this storm is only the first of many to come. Does that sound familiar? That's what they just said. At a different place and a different man. A physicist said that, yeah. For a long time we had one of the quietest periods of electromagnetic activity. After such a long time the sun is waking up and it's big news. Yep. Big news, alright. I've never seen one of these, you know, from where I'm at. <clears throat> but, uh, they sure are colorful. That's what I can say. Did anybody have a chance wherever you live to see any of it? Anybody in England get a chance? Somebody up in the higher altitudes and stuff somewhere Alaska looked pretty good I saw some good ones from up there now that's what I wanted to bring to you talk to you about this fetuses I just thought that was weird all of a sudden it just popped up after months of, uh, of nothing it's out of ordinary whether I don't think they'll pass it though uh, there's too many even if it were going on you know we don't know but even if it were there's too many that don't believe it so they're not going to bother with it and even if they knew it they'll do what they're told So, I'll let you all go. I'll talk to you soon. It's pretty good here. I mean, the weather sure feels strange for the latter part of January. I think it's going to hit 60 degrees again. So, I don't know if we're going to see snow here or not, really. <clears throat> Last year we had a lot, but this year is like spring. Just came out of summer and went into a mild spring or something. Let's see if it holds. Well, good night and God bless. See you soon.